What's up guys, Tom with Ferris Engineering and today we're going to be stiffening up your pedestrian bar on your Toyota Supra. Alright, so basically what we've noticed is there is a little bit of flex in the pedestrian bar uh, which is ultimately where our uh, splitter mounts to uh, with these mounts here and uh, with the introduction of our high downforce front splitter we want to try to eliminate as much flex as possible uh, for you guys because ultimately that will translate into the splitter flexing uh, under a uh, downforce condition. So basically what we're going to do is tie the crash bar into the pedestrian bar uh, thus eliminating pretty much all of the flex that's associated with the pedestrian bar. All right, tools to install your splitter mount upgrade for the Toyota Supra splitter. Um, I'm gonna want a stubby-ish drill to fit between the crash bar and the pedestrian mount. We'll cover that during the install. And then you're gonna want a pretty short step bit that's got a 3 8 um, step pretty close to the beginning of that. This is an impact driver, uh, stubbiest thing I could find. Technically not the right tool, but it gets the job done. You need a center punch a grinder, a die grinder of some sort. I like uh, using the carbide bit with it. A cutoff wheel, tape measure, ratchet, 9 16 wrench, 10 millimeter wrench, 11 millimeter wrench, something to make your marks with, five millimeter Allen and four millimeter Allen. Now, because we do need to take the bumper off, um, uh, you could skip this if you already know what's needed, but you're primarily just gonna need a 10 millimeter socket, eight millimeter socket, obviously a ratchet, um, a panel popping tool or a clip removal tool or a flathead screwdriver might work as well. Uh, T25 Torx, T30 Torx. All right, so what I've done here obviously is remove the front bumper. Um, and if you need to know how to do that, you can refer to our actual carbon intake uh, video. Um, and that'll show you how to uh, remove the front bumper or you can follow one of the many guides that are online. Basically, we need access to this portion here. So what we need to do in order to get uh, our dimensions correct is we're gonna measure 135 millimeters or, hi Eric, five and approximately uh, five and three eighths inch. Make your mark. That's gonna be the center point of the clevis we're gonna mount to the crash bar. And then we need to clearance this. Uh, there is a little bit of a lip here, so we need to clearance this and make sure it's flush with the bottom side of the crash bar. Drill our hole and then um, install, ow. That hurt. Uh, dr <laughs> drill our hole for the rivet nut, then we can attach the uh, clevis. And then we're gonna do the same thing down here. But let's focus on the top and get right into it. All right, so I basically made my marks and Safety first. Uh, we are going to start clearancing this section here. I'm gonna use a cutoff wheel to start. Uh, basically use whatever you got. Uh, I'm gonna use a cutoff wheel to cut most of the lip off and then I'm gonna switch over to a die grinder. So you guys will see that in this little montage coming up because obviously you don't wanna hear this being cut. So I'm gonna turn the mic off and enjoy. All right, we have our little uh, notch thing right here cut out or clearance for our clevis. And you can see that the clevis, so the, basically the reason for that is the clevis is gonna like kind of stick out a little uh, from the front surface of the bumper. Um, and then this will allow you to get the, the uh, rivet nut that we're about to install into the center of the, the meat of the crash bar surface down here. Um, and that basically, uh, if you don't, it's pretty offset it's offset pretty far back. So um, basically that's why we did that. Uh, what I did mention before is when you get your measurement, I believe it was uh, 135 millimeters, um, you wanna basically uh, measure about a half inch on each side because the uh, basically diameter of the clevis is about uh, an inch. So that's basically the size of the hole or the slot that you need to cut. Next thing I did was basically, I used my center punch but we hold this up on your mark, um, which I put in the worst spot because I ended up cutting it off, but I know it was right here pretty much. And you wanna just kind of take your center punch and then 
kind of just scribe a little circle and then you'll have a mark on the bottom of the crash bar to which you can center punch. Once you got your center punch, we're gonna start the drilling process. So to drill this, you obviously have a limited amount of room here. Uh, I know this is an uh, impact driver, uh, but um, removing the pedestrian bar just seemed like something I didn't want to do and probably something you guys don't want to do either. Uh, I imagine it involves removing the duct and taking out like you know six bolts or something like that on either side, but this removal doesn't seem like anything I want to do. Anyways, use a unibit that has a 3 8 uh, a fairly stubby one. Um, that's got a, uh, a 3 8 size hole uh, or step pretty close to the top, which is basically what I'm gonna use here. And we're going to uh, just go on to that center point mark and drill it. And of course, safety first, right? Again, I know this is probably the wrong tool. It's definitely the wrong tool, um, but it's a throwaway step bit, so. All right, holes drilled to 3 eighths of an inch. Now we're going to grab our rivet nut and rivet nut installer tool, and we need to assemble it just like this. All right. Next thing we need is our 9 16 wrench and ratchet or Allen key, probably a uh, ratchet's better, but a uh, five millimeter Allen. I'm gonna stick that up into the hole that we just drilled. And we're gonna hold back the hex portion or that black, the, the nut portion of the install tool. And then uh, begin tightening the Allen bolts. Make sure you hold the rivet nut assembly uh, up against the bumper flush which I'm gonna be honest with you, is a little difficult, but can be done. So during the initial crush, you'll feel a little bit of resistance. And then once it crushes and uh, starts to collapse on the inside, you'll, you can see now I kind of have, or I had a couple good turns there, and then you'll get some pretty significant resistance. And that is when you, have achieved the full amount of crush. Back the knot off. Boom, got a fully installed rivet nut. So now we're gonna put the clevis on here and then we're gonna move to drilling the lower section. And I'll show you that in just a second. All right, grab your ruler, oh, tape measure, uh, your marker and your center punch. And this edge of, or the, just the edge of the pedestrian bar, we're gonna take our tape measure um, using metric here because that's what gave us the, gave me the nice round number and it's also all I have. You can do the conversion if you want uh, online. Google has a great resource for that. Anyways, latch the tape measure on the end. And uh, because this is radius, it's kind of weird, but basically just um, uh, run it straight across, kind of like the back edge. You'll see a little gap here, but no big deal. Uh, you wanna make a mark at 400 millimeters. And one thing you'll notice is that there is a flat portion and then it kind of bevels down uh, or angles down a little bit. We're gonna be mounting the rivet nut on the flat portion, the top uh, surface. And you wanna basically just find center, uh, if I'm being honest, because there is a bit of a radius here, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, but this section is about a, 
eh, it's about a half an inch. So if you wanted to uh, take it in about a quarter inch from the back edge and make your mark. So we've got that center punched. Now we're gonna repeat basically the same process as up top. Use the impact driver. Again, the only reason I'm using it is because it's stubby and it fits in this area. Um, and our unit bit. We're gonna drill those, that hole to three eighths of an inch and we're gonna install that rivet nut in the same exact way we just did the top. So I'm gonna do all of that and then I'll come back and show you how to set up the uh, splitter ties. All right, rivet nut is installed. Uh, holes drilled, rivet nuts installed, all that stuff. So we're gonna take our 25 millimeter sock, low profile socket head cap screws and we're gonna insert them into the top of the clevis. This way for both top and bottom mounts. And we're simply just gonna thread them into the rivet nuts. Then we're gonna grab our clevis, um, uh, splitter tie, and you're gonna assemble the rod ends to the tie rod, uh, just like this. Uh, we have a right hand and a left hand thread here, so if it's not going in, you probably have the wrong one. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to be a typical installation for most cars, so run the rod ends all the way in uh, because this is going to be fairly tight. Line up the splitter tie inside of the clevises so you have the correct angle on your clevises. Then you're gonna to wanna to remove the tie and tighten the clevises where they are. Uh, I'm using an Allen key here. You can use a socket if you want, but this seemed like the most convenient to grab. Uh, you can use Loctite here if you'd like, um, but the reality is the screw can never actually, or the, the bolt can never actually back out because it'll literally just run into the rod end. Okay, so bang, that's all lined up. Now we just need our hardware, uh, 25 millimeter button head cap screws, 12 millimeter watt M6 washers, and the <clears throat> serrated M6 flange nuts uh, that go onto the back side. I'm gonna grab that real quick and be right back. All right, hardware acquired, 25 millimeter button head cap screws. You can see the, hopefully you can see the 25 millimeter or 12 millimeter washer on there. You want that to be on the bolt head side. And just to keep things looking clean, I'm gonna install the bolt head and the washer on the outside, even though no one's ever going to see this. Um, you may have to pull down on the pedestrian bar just a hair to get the uh, the bolt to go in there. Put the M6 serrated flange nut on the back side or front, it's up to you, doesn't matter. Just like that. And then you want to torque these Hold back the nut with a 10 millimeter wrench and torque these to six foot pounds. Uh, and since we have these already adjusted, you wanna tighten these guys up, the uh, jam nuts to a prox, that's not tight at all because I need an 11 millimeter. Um, tighten the jam nuts to six foot pounds as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna grab Eric and we're going to see the amount of deflection that has been reduced. All right guys, we are post install 255. Tom's hanging on it and we go to 256 maybe. So a millimeter, so we dropped it 80%, six mil to one mil. All right, so as you can see, we have pretty much eliminated all of the deflection, uh, which I would say is uh, a good result. So 
that being said, that's the end of the install. Um, I hope you like this quick and dirty solution that um, is nice and clean. You don't see anything on the outside of the car and uh, ultimately should aid in some of your performance benefits for your either standard front splitter or high downforce front splitter. So with that, uh, that's gonna conclude the video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to send us an email at sales at Until next time, we'll see you later.